Today on Bridges, Monica speaks on turning problems into solutions. We're going to talk today from moving from problems into solutions. And there's probably no secret that problems are absolutely everywhere. They're at school, they're in the workplace, in churches, and just in everyday, ordinary life. If you just go to the grocery store and look at the shelves, you know, they're lined with products that promise our lives solutions, even if it's detergent. You know, there'll be cold water wash, and there's extra boost to get stains out, stain sticks that get stains out. We're looking all over the place to solve the problems that are in our life. And at the workplace, it's good when people find problems, but we all know it's so much better when we can solve problems. And really, even when we look in the stories in the Bible, they're filled with people who encounter problems and how they respond to those problems. Do they pray about them and ask God to help them find solutions? And one of the first stories we're gonna look at today is a story of Moses where he's leading people and then the pe people end up getting angry and complaining because they encounter this problem. So look with me at Exodus 15, and I'll start reading there out of the 22nd verse from the New Living Translation. It says, Then Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea, and they moved out into the desert of Shur. They traveled in this desert for three days without finding any water. When they came to the oasis of Merah, the water was too bitter to drink, so they called the place Merah, which means bitter. Then the people complained and turned against Moses. What are we going to drink, they demanded. So Moses cried out to the Lord for help, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. Moses threw it into the water, and this made the water good to drink. When you think about this story, it's not hard to even think about it in terms of modern times. I mean, if people have been traveling and not just in a car, but physically walking from spot to spot for three days, three days without any water is too long. We know that as human beings, we need water, we need to be hydrated, and these people are no different. And the first thing that most of us do when we're following somebody and things become difficult, especially where it's a daily need, not just a want, but something that we need like water, they get angry at their leader. And these people complain and they, you know, they're telling Moses, what are we gonna do for water? You need to do something, you need to do something now. And for for those of you that are watching that are leaders, whether you are leading your family, whether you are a boss or a supervisor in the workplace, whether you're a pastor or a minister leading a congregation, we encounter these situations where the people that are following us become unhappy, be it that, you know, paychecks aren't big enough, there's a problem in the workplace that we can't resolve, and that is pressure. Even on moms and dads, it's pressure when there are problems in your family or your children encounter problems and people are looking to us for solutions. And so it's no different for Moses. He encounters this big problem and he knows he's got to come up with water in order for these people that he's leading just to be able to live. I mean, water is a basic necessity. So the word says that he cried out to God, and God showed him a piece of wood. Now, in some translations that you have, it might say a branch, but we understand that, you know, wood comes from a branch and a branch comes from a tree. But God showed him the solution, and the solution was always right there in their midst. Honestly, any one of these people on this trip could have seen the solution, which was this piece of wood or this branch, and to put it into the water. And most of the time, in all of our lives, be it in the workplace, at school, at home, the solution is right there. We just can't see it. And in this case, it takes Moses really praying and crying out to God inside of this desperate situation for him to be able to see that the solution was right there and that all he really had to do was take this piece of wood, put it in the water, and it would turn the bitter water into water that was drinkable for all the people so that they could continue on this journey and actually continue to live because they needed water. But one of the things that we all need is eyes to see the solutions that God has already placed right in our path. I can't tell you how many times that 
I bump up against something, I'm worried about something, maybe I feel like people want something resolved and I'm not sure what to do about it. And unless I pray, and unless I ask God to open up my eyes, I can just skip right over the solution. And this could have happened to Moses, but thank God he cried out and asked God to help him see the solution. So you might want to ask yourself about some of the problems and sometimes we just pray, oh God, solve this problem, make this thing go away, make those complaining mouths just be quiet. We do those sorts of things. Sometimes the right prayer is, God, open up my eyes to see the solution. We are all just people. We live in this frame on this fallen world, UHTM, where we keep encountering a problem, encountering a problem, and I don't know what to do about it. And I'll pray and all of a sudden the thought will come to me. Oh, well, do X, Y, Z. And then we do that and everything is okay. And sometimes God works in other ways where it's someone that works here that has the idea and they see the solution. But what we all need to do is to pray for God to show us with our eyes or actually to see through his eyes what the solution is. This solution for Moses came in a way that would actually save lives. And thankfully, not all of our problems are life-threatening, but sometimes they are. Sometimes it's a situation in a workplace or at school or it's church or it's even in a family or a relational situation. Take some time today and even throughout this week to pray and ask God to open up your eyes to things that are right there in your path that maybe you're just not seeing. It may be that God has already given you everything you need to solve the problem that you're facing right now. And it's just that with our human eyes, we don't see it. I would think if I put myself in Moses' solution that in place, if I came to a body of water, and that water is called Mara because it's so bitter that I would think that the solution would be, let's go to another body of water. This water isn't any good. I wouldn't think that the solution would be a piece of wood or a part of a branch putting that in water. How would that make it better? Well, it would only do it if God was in it. So pray that God would open up your eyes so that you can go and actually move from the place of problems into a place of solutions. God is a God of solutions, but he doesn't always just hand us the answer. Many times he asks us to cooperate. And sometimes that cooperation comes in the form of praying, God, open up my eyes. Help me see what I need to do next. We've got to take a break here in just a moment. And when we come back on moving problems into solutions, we're going to take a look at a situation where the disciples faced of not having enough. If you would like to purchase a copy of today's show for $15, you can send a check to the address on your screen or call us at 615-754-0039. Be sure to mention the program number on the screen. Is my nose Why too can't big? I be taller? Will I ever be able Do to I look too that old? Fit? In her book, Does This Make Me Look Fat? and other questions that need to be answered in the mirror of God's Word, author Monica Schmelter gives biblical insights that encourage women and girls to reject worldly standards of beauty and instead look into the mirror of God's Word to redefine their lives and beauty. This book was meant for me and every other girl who has looked in a mirror and said, I wish my, you fill in the blank, was smaller, bigger, or just plain different. This book is practical, biblical truths that can and will help you change the way you view yourself in the mirror. Order your copy today. Check out www.ctntv.org. You can watch us streaming live, find out more about your favorite shows, learn how to create your own commercial spot, and join our prayer community. Be sure to visit www.ctntv.org today. 
If you're just joining us today, we're talking about moving from problems to solutions. And most of us are very familiar with encountering problems and how frustrating that can be. And sometimes really it can be life-threatening. It can be all different kinds of levels of problems. And in this particular segment, we're gonna talk about the problem of not having enough. And most of us have been in that situation. It can be, you know, not having enough resources, not having enough time, not having enough ideas. We've all been in situations where there is lack. And most of the times when we bump up against lack, there's a lot of complaining. Uh, sometimes there can be a lot of worry, a lot of frustration, perhaps even lots of sleepless nights. Like, what am I gonna do? How am I going to resolve that problem? If we're in a situation where there's more month than there is money, that can cause considerable angst. It can cause strain in relationships. It makes us kind of scratch our heads and think, okay. And, and if we're really worried about keeping the utilities on and keeping food on the table or what we're going to do about a situation at work or how we're going to solve a certain problem, it can really affect our entire attitude. And it was no different even in the Bible days. There were times and situations where the disciples and where other people faced situations where perhaps they wanted to do something about a particular problem, but didn't have the resources or the time or the availability to turn that problem into a solution. We're gonna pick up in a situation that the disciples were in where Jesus really challenged them in the middle of them not having enough. We're gonna look at Matthew 14, starting with verse 15. And it says, that evening the disciples came to him, and this is speaking of Jesus. This, and they said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. And when you first look at that particular scripture, it sounds reasonable to me. I mean, Jesus has been sharing the word. He's been ministering all day and they're in a remote place. I mean, you know, it's not like they had Wendy's right down the street and Pizza Hut. They're in a far off place. It's getting dark. The disciples are concerned for these people's physical bodies. And you know, sometimes um, in Christendom or in Christianity, we wanna put all the attention on the spiritual. But honestly, God put us in physical bodies. We have to feed these bodies. We have to get the proper rest. We have to do our part. And this is what the disciples are king in. They have been feeding their spirits all day. Let's let them go so that they can get uh, something to eat and they can get the food that they need. Because if we don't let them out of here soon enough, all those places are gonna close up. It's not like today where you can get food 24 seven from Kroger, Publix, the drive through whatever. But Jesus challenges them and he challenges all of us in different ways inside of our lives every single day. In verse 16, it says, but Jesus said, that isn't necessary, you feed them. Now, can you imagine the pressure that we might feel if we're in this situation, that all of these people, over 5,000 men, and women and kids are there and somebody tells us to feed them. I mean, pretty much if you tell me 10 people are coming over my house for lunch, I'm gonna get nervous because that's a lot of people and that requires a lot more food than serving lunch for two people. And I'm gonna be thinking, well, exactly, how am I gonna do that? And yet Jesus challenges and he says, that isn't necessary. And if I were one of those disciples, I would be thinking, oh, you better believe it's necessary that we send these people away. And yet Jesus says, no, it isn't necessary. You feed them. So he places the responsibility squarely upon their shoulders. And we all need to be aware that whenever Jesus places responsibility on our shoulders, whenever he gives us that nudge, whenever he gives us that challenge in our lives, he always makes a way to solve the problem of not having enough. In verse 17, the disciples respond with what I think is reasonable, but we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. So they're telling Jesus why they can't do what he's asked them to do. And before we're too hard on them, 
Let's think about this. How many times have we said to the Lord, oh, I can't do that. I can think of several times in my life where I felt prompted to do something by the Lord. And then I explain, you know, you don't understand. I'm really not qualified. You don't understand. I don't have enough money. You don't understand. I don't have enough time. I don't know how to do that. I'm going to look ridiculous. Nobody's going to like it if I do that. We all go through these scenarios in our hearts and heads. But thankfully, Jesus continues to work with the disciples and we pick up in verse 18 where he says, bring them here. And he's speaking of the fishes and the loaves. And, and then in verse 19, he says, then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people and they all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day in addition to all the women and children. And you know, a lot of people, when we read the word of God, will either say, well, you know, that's absolutely impossible. Food just couldn't be multiplied that way. There's no way that happened. There was actually must have been other food in the crowd. And, you know, there might have been other food in the crowd. But what we know is that the disciples only knew about the five loaves and the fishes. And I believe what the word of God says, that Jesus multiplied that food. And sometimes people are just cynical about that. And other times people are like, well, you know, I just don't know that I can believe everything that the word of God has to say. And other times people just want to make it a formula and just follow this exactly. We follow the word exactly the way that God speaks it to us. But for these disciples, what was required to have the solution was their obedience. It was that Jesus challenged them and they had to obey the challenge. They had to bring the food that was there to him and allow him to bless it, allow him to break it. And then he allows the disciples to participate in terms of distributing it and collecting up the leftovers. So whatever problems that we have in our life, and I'm sure that for every one of you watching and myself included, we have some problems. There are some things in our lives, challenges that we all face, be it not having enough of something or not knowing what to do about something. But what is important in terms of turning the from, moving from the problem to the solution is that we obey whatever it is that he tells us to do. And I can hear some of you saying, well, I would obey if he would only tell me what to do. The only way that we can hear what to do the only way we can hear what's next is to have a relationship with Christ. That's not just a time of putting our prayer request and our laundry list out there, but quiet time to listen. Time away, perhaps, from email, Facebook, texting, all the activities in our church, a time to get quiet, a time to say, you know, God, I've got this, this, and this, and you speak to me. And sometimes that means just opening up your Bible and reading. And all of a sudden, a verse that you've read 800 other times pops out at you and you'll know that's the challenge. That's the word from God. There is no formula. You can't just give people one, two, three steps to solve every problem. There's obedience. There's prayer. There's the word that needs to go into it. But as you listen to the Lord, he will speak. He will let you know what needs to come next? When we come back, we'll continue talking about moving from problems to solutions. If you would like to contact WHTN, you can write to the address on the screen or call us at 615-754-0039 or visit us on the web at www.ctntv.org. WHTN has helped local churches and ministries launch television ministries for years. Are you thinking about expanding into television ministry? WHTN has an all new HD studio. It's affordable for local churches and ministries. You can contact WHTN for more information on our website, ctntv.org. 
Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Monica Speaks TV today. If you would like to purchase a copy of today's show for $15, you can send a check to the address on your screen or call us at 615-754-0039. Be sure to mention the program number on the screen. Well, we've been talking today about moving problems and turning them into solutions. And we've talked about how one of the things that's necessary is that we pray uh, for God to open up our eyes so that we can see solutions. Many times the solutions to the things that we face are right in front of us. We just can't see them. As in the case with Moses, when the people came to a body of water and it was too bitter to drink, God opened Moses' eyes as Moses cried out and showed him this branch, this wood. He put that into the water and it made the water drinkable for the people. There are those cases. There are other cases that we really have to obey what God tells us to do. If God has issued a challenge to us through his word or in that small, still voice in our hearts and we don't obey, we may never walk into being able to solve that problem because solving that problem is intrinsically linked to our, our obedience to the Lord. And one of the other things that's absolutely required, and I wish that there was a formula. I wish I could tell you every day we do one, two, three, and that'll solve all your problems, but it doesn't work that way. It's faith. This walk is a walk with Christ. It involves us not only crying out to him in prayer, but for us to listen to solutions. But one of the things that we have to allow God to do through his word and by his spirit is that our minds would be renewed because we can get caught up into thought patterns of negativity, thought patterns that seem extremely real to us and thought patterns that are even confirmed by other people or in our own experience that say, you know what, I can never do that. This situation will never change. My husband, my kids, my job, whatever will always be that way and it's never gonna change. And we're gonna look at a man who felt this way in the Bible, and he even when Jesus challenges him and begins to talk to him about his life, he begins to tell him, look, I don't have anybody to help me. And then until we allow God to really renew our minds and to change the way that we think, there are a certain number of solutions in our lives that we will never walk into. Look with me, if you would, at John 5, and we'll start there in verse 1. It says, afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city, near the sheep gate, was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? Now, we would think that it would pretty much just be common sense that if you had been sick for 38 years, that the answer would be yes, I want to get well. And you know, many times we'll hear people talk about how the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and how God is a gentleman. He doesn't force his will or his way on us. We have a free will. We can choose to obey or not to obey. And I really think that probably one of the reasons Jesus asked this question was to make the man think about his own life. And there come a, comes a point in all of our lives, we have to think about our own lives. I mean, do we really want a particular problem solved or have we just lived that way for so long that we just believe it's not gonna change and it's just easier to believe that than to do what it would take to change? Because there are people that I know that if I talk to them today, they will say, well, you know, I don't have a job. I don't have enough money. I, I can't get along with my boss, whatever the situation is. And when I see them six months from now, the situation is exactly the same. And it's not that the situation is not problematic. It's that what the person would need to do in order to bring change is either too uncomfortable for them or they're not willing to make the changes that we need to make. And so one of the things that you have to decide and I have to decide and this man had to decide is, you know, really, do you want to get well? I mean, are there things that you want to get better? If you have rebellious teenagers, 
Like, do you just want it to get better? Like you just want them not to rebel? Or are you willing to discipline and correct them with the love of God and deal with whatever consequences you have to deal with in order to bring those children along to help mature them. Because chances are, you're not gonna just pray one prayer and then immediately get the answer and the kids are just gonna be happy and not talk back anymore. Sometimes there's a process you have to go through. So we have to ask ourselves, are we willing? And that's what Jesus is asking this man. Do you wanna get well? And then the man answers back in verse seven. He says, I can't, sir. The sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told, told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Now, when you think about this man's response, the sick man, he's telling Jesus what he knows. He's telling Jesus what he's experienced. Jesus said, do you want to get well? And the guy's like, hey, I can't get well. Because the only way this guy knew to get well was for somebody to help him into this body of water when the body of water would be stirred. And this translation, the New, New Living Translation says the water bubbles up. But it's just talking about the stirring of the water. And so he recites to Jesus why it's absolutely impossible for his life to change. <laughs> and sometimes that's what we do. We get so steeped in our thinking, our mindset based on what we know and what we've experienced. And I am not saying that all of that is not real. It was real for this man. It's just that we have to be open enough with a renewed mind in Christ to know that God has more than one way to bring solution or to bring healing to us. With the family down the street, the solution, God may work a different way. So we need to be open when it comes to moving from problems into solutions to how God would work because Jesus wants to introduce this man to himself and how when, it's, when it comes to Jesus, you don't have to have somebody help you into the water. That's how it had been for this man all of his life, but there was coming for this man a change. So Jesus tells him in verse eight, Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and he began walking. You see, this man got his problem solved, but in a way that was totally different than what he imagined. What this guy had imagined for all of these years that he had been laying there was all he needed was just one kind person to help him get up and get into that water. But really, all he needed was one encounter with Jesus and to obey the word of the Lord. So whether your problem today is sickness or not enough of something, or you just can't see the solution, allow the word of God to renew your mind. The more steep that our mind is in this world and in the world system, the, the less solutions that we will see because this world doesn't have answers that aren't limited. And if we want unlimited answers and potential and opportunity, we have to see things the way that God sees them. We are almost out of time. I've so enjoyed being with you today. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you. If you would like to purchase a copy of today's show for $15, you can send a check to the address on your screen or call us at 615-754-0039 be sure to mention the program number on the screen. Thanks for watching Bridges.